नमस्ते वेलकम टू द गाइडें क्लासस् फॉर द ग्रूप वन सर्वीस टेलीकास्टेड बै अवर टी सैट वी आर् डिस्कसिंग अबउट दि तेलंगाना एकानमी वित् द हेल्प आफ सोशियो एकनमिक अवटुक् आफ तेलंगा सो वी नो दैट द ग्रेट कंट्रिब्यूशन फर् इंडियन एकानमी फ्रम अवर् Telangana state only in all sectors not only in the agriculture sector even uh, service sector industrial sector also the major contribution by our telangana state the reason is the government policies and its implementation correct okay so per capita income in the state continues to be higher than the national level in 2020 and 21 year the per capita income in the state was 1.78 times higher than the national average means uh, it it is uh, approximately double to the per capita income of national means uh, the government has taken a very good initiations like uh, tsi pass correct ict policies and other industrial policies also to increase the per capita income of telangana state so here the very important question in the examination point of view so in 2020 21 financial year the per capita income is uh, how many times higher than the national average that is 1.78 times and uh, our per capita income for the year 2021 and 2022 is 2 lakhs 78833 clear okay this is a very important uh, information in 2020 21 economic output in the state measured by the gross state domestic product was 9.78 lakh crores it only fell by just 1.26% in 2011 12 prices generally we will measure this uh, gdp uh, based on 2011 and 12 prices then just it was fallen by 1.26% and increased by 1.35% in the year 2021 prices when you compare with the 2021 2020 and 21 prices it is increased by 1.35% when you compare with the 2011 12 prices it is just fallen by 1.26% so here uh, in the examination they may ask the question uh, what is the gdp uh, in the financial year uh, 2020 and 21 is from the telangana state is 9.78 lakh crores rupees the telangana economy has survived better than the country in the past year due to the impressive performance of the agriculture and allied sectors such as crops livestock fisheries and forestry so not only on these sectors so in all sectors the government of course the telangana is performed a uh, impressive performance uh, and they increase the uh, contribution of gdp in national level so that's uh, they will ask uh, the question in this uh, scenario that is uh, what is the gdp for the financial year 2020 and 21 is from the telangana state is 9.78 lakh crores the real gross state value added generally we will call it as a gsva of the sector grew by an impressive uh, percentage that is 20.9% compared to this national growth rate is just 3% is quite modest correct so the national growth rate for the real gross state value uh, gsva just 3% but uh, for telangana state it is uh, gsva is uh, 
20.9% uh, when you compare with the, the national growth rate is 3%. So, these two statistics are uh, very, very important. The GVA is the output of the country less the intermediate consumption which is the difference between gross output and net output. So, uh, maybe all of you know this uh, uh, that is intermediate consumption uh, when you compare to compare with the GVA uh, generally you, you know that GVA is the difference between the gross output and the net output like uh, you can calculate the GVA. Since 2016 and 17 year the average annual growth rate in this sector has been 14.5 percent from 2016, 16, 17 uh, year onwards the growth rate is increasing to uh, around uh, averagely 14.5 uh, percent. The driving forces behind this success is the crop and the livestock subsectors averaging annual growth rate of uh, 17.1 percent and 13.9 percent respectively. So, when you compare with the, this uh, the driving forces for the increasing in the uh, GDP growth growth rate in the crop sector it is 17.1 percent and the livestock subsectors uh, it is 13.9 percent. This is a very very important phenomenon. Various initiatives, the reason for driving forces in the growth rate are uh, the reason is various initiatives that is uh, those are focusing on the horticulture crops, livestock for example, uh, sheep rearing development program and the mass free ships, the, the free ships are given to the, those people that community and uh, goat dewarming program and irrigation especially irrigation projects like uh, through a uh, Kalesim project and Mission Kakatiya and other uh, irrigation projects contributed this robust growth. So, this generally they may ask to uh, what is the reason for uh, there is an impressive growth rate in Telangana state means here that initiatives uh, taken or adapted by the Telangana government especially in the horticulture crops and livestock that is a very one more important. So, example for the uh, giving importance for livestock means uh, sheep rearing uh, development program and uh, the mass free sheep uh, and goat uh, deworming uh, program. So, uh, the government is uh, every year giving uh, some free sheep for that uh, community. So, it increases the uh, livestock correct and the major impact is uh, irrigation uh, projects that is uh, irrigation through Kaleswaram project and uh, Mission Kakatiya project. In contrast to the agriculture and allied sector in 2020-21, the industrial sector growth including mining sector uh, contracted by 5.6 percent. So, you know, so uh, considering this agriculture sector and its allied sectors, uh, industrial sector also there is a growth in the uh, industrial sector especially uh, in the mining sector uh, it is a nearly 5.6 percent. The industrial sector however, contributes a smaller share at the state level than the national level. 21.7 uh, percent in Telangana versus 28.5 uh, percent in India. So, just a small uh, uh, deviation uh, less growth in the industrial sector a uh, small share that is a uh, uh, 21.7 percent from Telangana where uh, 28.5 percent in India when you compare with the industrial sector, the growth uh, in the industrial sector. The government has been uh, proactive in implementing initiatives to drive industrial growth such as uh, Telangana state industrial project approval and self certification system that is TSI pass self certification system and uh, uh, Telangana state industrial uh, project approval.
project approval and self certification system that is actually uh, there is a full form of uh, TSI pass. So, I will uh, repeat this uh, what is TSI pass means here TSI pass means Telangana state industrial project approval and self certification system that is a full form of TSI pass. This act was, uh, was, was uh, taken by the government in 2014 for the speedy processing of application to set up industries in the state clear. So, this is a very important thing in this uh, they, there is a, so, so many objective type questions may come in the examination what is when was uh, uh, the TSI pass uh, act was uh, launched that is in 2014 and as you know it and what is the full form of TSI pass means here Telangana state industrial project approval and self certification system that is the full form of TSI pass and uh, the in Telangana the industrial sector growth rate is 21.7 uh, percent. So, these are very very important ok. So, why this TSI pass is introduced means to speed up uh, or to speedy processing of application and to set up uh, industries in the state that is uh, a reason for uh, launching the TSI pass act in 2014. The special difference in grass, uh, grass district domestic product GDDP reveal the fact that within the state some areas such as uh, Rangareddy, Hyderabad, Mitchell, Malkazgiri, Sangareddy and Nalgunda contribute more GSDP and have collectively contributed nearly 51.8 percent of the state's capital GSDP. This is a very very important here uh, uh, then the grass state domestic product GSDP means a grass state uh, domestic product uh, where is a uh, one more word is there GDDP means grass district domestic product means uh, uh, so the actually the grass domestic uh, uh, district domestic product uh, is nearly 51.8 percent of the state uh, uh, GSDP from the few districts uh, those are uh, uh, such uh, districts are Rangareddy, Hyderabad, Mitchell, Malkazgiri, Sangareddy and Nalgunda. These districts uh, contribute nearly 51.8 percent of GDP in GSDP. This is a very important uh, thing here we have to identify and just remember this one it may comes in the examination question, question here how much. In 2020 21 per capita income in the state was nearly 2.27 lakh rupees and only grew up by 0.6 percent from 2.26 lakhs in 2019-20. Actually, in 2019-20, it is 2.26 lakhs uh, per capita income, where, whereas in 2020-21, uh, uh, it is increased to just 0.6 percent and increased to 2.27 lakhs. Importantly, however, the state's per capita income is not only higher than the national average, but has consistently been growing at faster rate at 10.7 percent as compared to the national rate of 7.2 percent during the same period. So, this is a important uh, uh, considerable thing here. So, when uh, uh, there is a growth in the uh, GDP with uh, the national level as 7.2 percent national capital income growth is 7.2 percent in this period in 2020 uh, 21 year in Telangana state it is a uh, 10.7 percent means approximately 3.5 percent is more when you compare with the uh, national level. This means that in the state the average citizen can expect their income to double in roughly 7 years whereas the average citizen in the country as a whole would be to wait about 10 years. So, if 
So, in Telangana state, so when you compare this uh, statistics, in just in 7 years is income will be as per this growth rate, we can expect that in Telangana state, uh, the um, income of the citizen of Telangana um, citizen uh, income will be doubled in 7 years, whereas uh, other than uh, Telangana uh, region means in the rest of the country, the citizens uh, uh, per capita income will be doubled for in 10 years. See, in 7 years, the per capita income of Telangana people will be increased to double, means it, if their per capita income will be doubled in 7 years, whereas in uh, other than the rest of the Telangana state in the country, it will be expected to double uh, in 10 years, means there is a, a 3 years margin gap is there. So, that is a uh, uh, um, remarkable uh, achievement from the uh, government in the financial aspect. One of the fundamental goals of the government is to generate growth that creates high quality jobs in the state. The labor force participation rate means LFPR. Here, uh, especially in this economy, so we are going to learn uh, these, uh, these statistics and uh, abbreviations. So, you have to concentrate on all these forms. Here, you using uh, the one word called as LFPR. LFPR means labor force participation rate. The labor force participation rate, which is the percentage of all those aged 15 years or more the, who are either currently employed or looking for employment is a measure of the labor supply in the economy. According to the periodic labor force survey 2018 and 19 conducted by the Ministry of Statistics and the program implementation that is MOSPI, the government of India LFPR in the state was 55.1 percent which was higher than the national figure which is 50.2 percent. So, in the Telangana state, the LFPR is 55.1 percent, whereas national uh, uh, level, so means uh, national level, the value is 50.2 percent, means nearly 5.5 percent is more in the LFPR, means labor force participation rate means how they are going, going to calculate this labor force participation rate means here uh, the percentage of all those aged more than 15 or more than 15 years age who are either uh, uh, currently employed or looking for employment is they will be they will be concerned for this uh, calculation for the labor force participation rate LFPR. And here in the Telangana government giving a very important thing is to, to generate growth that high quality jobs in the state. So, that is a, a remarkable achievement from the Telangana state in LFPR. So, in LF, so the question comes what is the LFPR rate in Telangana state is 55.1 percent, uh, what is the LFPR rate in national level that is 50.2 percent, clear. This is a very important who conducted this means who calculate means labor force survey conducted this uh, uh, LFPR and with the support of Minister of Statistics and Program Implementation. Here also one more uh, abbreviation is there that is MOSPI, Minister of Statistics and Program Implementation that is MOSPI. So, with the help of uh, MOSPI labor force survey. Uh, conducted a periodic uh, survey that is in 2018-19 and uh, as per this uh, statistics uh, uh, the LFPR uh, for Telangana state is 55.1 percent whereas national level it is 50.2 percent. Significantly the female LFPR which is also a measure of female empowerment and agency was much higher than in Telangana that is 38.3 percent than India 24.5 percent. Overall 27 percent of employed persons in that state have a salaried job and this is higher than the national average at uh, 23.8 percent. As per this uh, uh, labor survey report, 
So, LFVR for the female is also means uh, the female empowerment and agency uh, which is conducted uh, measures this female LFPR, uh, the value is uh, 38.3 percent. Whereas, uh, uh, India uh, means national level uh, it is 24.5 percent means uh, uh, nearly 14 percent, 14 percent is more than the national level LFPR. So, our uh, Telangana uh, female people have a good LFPR means they are uh, uh, empowered, empowered uh, than the rest of the country. And when you consider uh, the overall uh, uh, employed persons in the Telangana state means who have uh, uh, the salaried job is nearly 27 percent. 27 percent of uh, for Telangana people have employment. This is uh, higher than the national average uh, is 23.8 percent. Here uh, uh, in the examination they may ask what is the LFPR of female in Telangana state that is uh, 38.3 percent. Uh, when you compare with the national level what is LFPR for female is 24.5 percent. What is the overall uh, uh, a percentage of people who got employment in the Telangana state means here are there how many people or percentage of people have uh, are salaried means here 27 percent in Telangana whereas uh, in national level it is uh, uh, is 23.8 percent. So, now we are uh, moving to the next one the public finance system. So, moving on now discuss how about the public finance system sector. So, good, good. Public financial management is a, a foundational for good governance. The government's ability to raise revenues efficiently and spend sparingly allows it to provide welfare. Over the last year allowed it to control the spread of COVID-19. The COVID-19 uh, induced lockdown in March 2020 led to high decline in the revenue as you know it. Uh, when uh, this COVID-19 uh, uh, was seriously spread in the throughout the world even our Telangana also uh, suffered lot and there is a decline in the uh, financial system correct. So, uh, decline in the revenue also. In April 2020 with the state's own tax revenue that is SOTR collected in April 2020 falling by 87.7 percent when you compare with the collection in April 2019. Just, uh, just when you compare the statistics of the revenue collected in 2019 year and 2020 April 20, uh, 2020 and April 2019 means uh, uh, there is a, a, a drastic fall down that is 87.7 percent. Expenditure requirements increased for the building this necessary medical uh, infrastructure and supplies such as uh, PPE kits, oxygen, um, oxygen, beds, ventilators, remaining all these things. It provides a welfare measures. The government sanctioned a total of 5 1268 crores for COVID-19 related measures. So, actually uh, for uh, providing all these uh, uh, infrastructure, medical infrastructure, uh, the government spends nearly 5268 crores for uh, providing these uh, PPE kits, oxygen uh, beds, ventilators, etcetera and health uh, uh, provisions all these things here. Here uh, the expenditure is increased because it is unexpected uh, uh, expenditure, but the revenue is decreased uh, nearly 87.7 percent. This is a, a crucial uh, in, in statistics uh, to know about uh, this uh, uh, pub public financial system. The expenditure requirement increased for the building the necessary medical infrastructure and supplies all these things. The government sanctioned uh, uh, nearly you know that 5268 crores for COVID-19 related measures. 
At the same time, the reformative efforts of the government enabled the state to borrow an additional amount of 1.75 percent of GSDP under uh, Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhiyan beyond the 3 percent of GSDP permissible as economy deficiency. So, generally when you have suffering with the uh, economy deficiency, we can borrow some amount from the GSDP amount DSDP we borrowed an additional amount because uh, uh, to provide uh, infrastructure to strengthen the uh, medical infrastructure. So, the government has borrowed uh, additional amount of uh, from the 1.75 percent of uh, GSDP under Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhyan. This is a, a very important Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhyan that word is very very important and uh, the beyond the 3 percent of GSDP is permissible as economy deficiency. So, there is a permissibility uh, to get uh, additional amount from the GSDP means here just it is permissible amount is 3 percent only, but um, our government has taken additional amount is 1.75 percent of GSDP that is the important information. The financial management in the state was more for a cited when compared to that of 18 general states India GS in the country during 2016 to 17 to 2018 to 19 represented by 2016 to 19. So, this is a, a very very important and um, the state recorded the highest annual tax growth during the period 2014 to 19 at nearly 16.6 percent. Between 2016 to 17 and 2018 to 19, that state's tax to GSDP ratio was the highest in India just at 7.5 percent against an average of 6.3 percent of India. This is uh, uh, one more uh, important information uh, that is uh, in between in the in 5 years period that is 2014 to 2019, there is a highest annual tax growth and uh, uh, there is an a growth GSDP growth that the state's tax to GSDP ratio was uh, nearly 7.5 percent, whereas average uh, is 6.3 percent. In 2016 and 17, 2018 and 19, the state capital expenditure uh, constituted 23.2 percent of total expenditure against 14.8 percent for India GS. The state's development expenditure constituted 78.5 percent of total expenditure against 7.4 percent for India GS. So, uh, this uh, these statistics are uh, very very important. Now, see uh, here. Uh, the state expenditure, a uh, capital state capital expenditure, actually it is 23.2 percent of the total expenditure. Whereas, when you consider for India, it is just 14.8 percent. Consider 14.8 percent, means uh, see the difference between the expenditure for the national level and our uh, uh, state uh, capital expenditure is uh, around uh, uh, approximately it is 8 percent, approximately it is a 8 percent difference is there. The state development expenditure constitutes 78.5 percent, whereas the total expenditure against the 7.4 percent. Here also there is a difference of 8 percent. So, so there is a growth in the uh, what is a, what is called as a, a GDP contribution, there is a growth and revenue also growth in but the expenditure, uh, state expenditure, uh, capital expenditure increases more when you compare with the uh, national uh, state's expenditure. That is a uh, uh, remarkable uh, information to know about all these things. So, in this way, so the, here the statistics are very, very important and uh, you have to um, prepare in, in an order on each uh, uh, financial year what is the a GSDP and how it is differ from the uh, national level and whether it is a increase or decrease this information we have to 
we have to consider. So, here very important thing is there is a uh, very good growth in the 5 years means 2014 and 19. There is a highest annual tax growth during the period in 2014 and 19. So, these statuses are, are very, very important. So, we will discuss the rest of the things in the next session. Thank you.